Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil. To make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. We heard a few minutes ago from the children that it's not always easy to wait. I think that's just as true for adults as it is for children. And certainly in this culture, we have a lot of opportunities not to wait. Um, we're becoming more and more accustomed to having things whenever we want them. If you order uh, some food at a fast food restaurant, you expect to have your food within a minute or two. Um, or you can go to the drive every night and get out of your car to get your food. But even so, even with our technologically advanced society, there are things we choose to wait for. There are still some things we think are worth waiting for. Particularly at this time of year, uh, we think about presents under the tree with Christmas coming. And many of us some of our presents by mail, maybe getting some packages in the mail in the coming weeks from friends and family sending Christmas presents. Um, so I'm going to take an informal poll, and I'm not taking notes, but um, would look, I'm curious to know who, if you got a Christmas package in mail and you knew it was Christmas presents, but you got it early before Christmas. Who would wait until Christmas? Oh. Yeah. Who, Who would open the package as soon as they get it? A couple of people too. Another area where we think it's worth waiting, usually, um, I think most people would say it's worth waiting in marriage. Um, most people, if you ask them, would say it's probably worth waiting for the right person and the rest of your life. So people talk about waiting for Mr. Right or Mrs. Right. Well, why is it important to be thinking about waiting? Because my mind is on here first. There you go. Um, it's important for us as people of faith. Because waiting plays an important role in our lives. As we heard in the words of the prophet this morning, um, the people of Israel had to wait hundreds of years for the coming of the Messiah. In our lives today, we often feel like we are waiting on God to act, or waiting on God to give us direction. And although Jesus was born a few thousand years ago, we are still waiting for Christ to bring his kingdom in all of its forms. It's also important that we talk about waiting and think about waiting because as with sports and music and many other things, we can get better at waiting by practice. So waiting is important and we need to practice. I think that our church mothers and fathers People who shaped our faith traditions knew that waiting is important, and they knew that waiting takes practice. And that's why the church began celebrating Advent hundreds of years ago, long before the shopping malls got in on the act. And the church celebrates Advent differently, too. At the shopping mall, the month before Christmas is your last chance to buy gifts, prepare food, send cards, go to parties, 
whatever you want to do before Christmas comes and it's all over until next year. All except the sales, of course. But in the church, Advent is a beginning. And Advent is a time to practice waiting for God's coming among us. So, our question is, how should we wait? How should we wait for Christmas? How should we practice Advent? Let's think about what it means to wait. We often use the word wait um, the way I did earlier, waiting for, um, waiting to open your Christmas presents, waiting for a bus, waiting for a birthday party. But there are other ways to use the word wait. When you go to a restaurant, a sit-down restaurant, not a fast food restaurant, you expect to be waited on, and your waiter or waitress, who might also be called a server, takes your order, serves you your meal, and cleans up after you. Or another way to use the word wait. When I was growing up, I loved to read stories of medieval times with the kings and the queens and princes and princesses, the knights, etc. Each princess or noble woman seemed to have her own set of ladies in waiting. This was a funny idea to me. All these ladies standing around waiting. What are they waiting for? But I realized that to be in waiting means something different. It means that these women, the ladies in waiting, were there to attend their mistress and to help her with whatever she needed. So in these images of waiting, the waiter and the lady in waiting, we find the ideas of service and of attention. To wait on God is not simply to expect His coming, but also to actively seek opportunities to serve, to actively pay attention to what God is doing in the world and how we can help. What would it look like for us to approach God with the attitude of a waiter, for a lady in waiting, to ask, how may I serve you? Last week, Pastor Cynthia talked about Jesus' call to care for the most vulnerable people, those who are hungry, thirsty, strangers, naked, or sick. In Matthew 25, the verse that we talked about last week, Jesus tells his disciples that serving the least of these is indeed a way of serving Christ himself. So what would it look like for us to be as attentive to God as a lady in waiting or as a leader? Would we find ourselves called out of our comfort zone? Perhaps to buy a meal for someone hungry that we meet on the street, or to make a meal for someone even if we're not going to meet them? Would we find ourselves called to talk with someone we don't know at church? We put aside our discomfort with hospitals and nursing homes to visit someone we know would love to see our face. What else does it mean to wait? How else can we understand this word wait? The French word for wait is attend, which comes from the same root as our word attend and attention. I recently heard from Walter, our music leader. His daughter is a violinist, and she recently had the opportunity to attend a concert by Yusuf Perlman, who is a renowned violinist. Um, certainly an artist that um, Walter's daughter looks up to. So when she was at that concert, you can be sure that she was paying close attention throughout the concert to every minute For you sports fans, many of you that this past weekend I'm sure have been watching football games, other sports games, um, basketball fans are still waiting. Um, when you're watching a game, hoping to see your team take home a win, you're going to be paying attention the whole time. You wouldn't want to miss one break. 
ready to quit. Even if it begins to look desperate for your team, you're a diehard fan who will stick around to the very end, hoping to see an amazing comeback. And if you're playing sports yourself, you definitely need to play paying attention. I never loved to class where I am. Not very really. But I remember one of the most important instructions from my gym teachers was pay attention to the ball. Watch the ball. Look out for the ball. If I didn't, I might be completely awakened by a ball in my face. What would it look like for us to wait for God by paying attention to how God is coming into the world? To how God is at work in the world? Would we notice small lessons that we might otherwise take for granted? Like seeing a long lost friend on a bus? Or being visited in shed by a dragon? Would we rejoice in small instances of hope as the stories we hear of people on opposite sides of a war sitting down for a meal together? For some of us, we may be able to see God's work in our lives more clearly when we look back than when we look around us. In our passage uh, from Isaiah, prophet remembers the amazing things that God has done in the past. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. God's awesome deeds before gives the people hope that he will again come down to save them. In the same way, what would it look like for us to pay attention to the way God has been at work in the past? Would we look back on our lives, or the lives of our families and our communities, and see the lessons that we've learned from unexpected teachers in unexpected ways, God doing unexpected, awesome deeds in our lives? Another way to understand waiting. Another kind of waiting that we all do, and especially in this season of shopping for gifts, waiting in line. I could ask you all, how many of you like waiting in line? I guess it's not many. At the grocery store, at the post office, at the bank, at the mall, we wait in line a lot, and it seems like even more so than usual. I recently heard a great idea about waiting in line that I think could become a wonderful Advent tradition for all of us. The idea is from Mark Roberts, who is a pastor, author, and retreat leader from Texas. He has realized that when he is waiting in line, wherever he is, Costco, the mall, Take that time as a gift, a chance to slow down, take a deep breath, and remember that waiting is what Advent is all about. Robert says, as I decided to let the experience of forced waiting be a moment of Advent reflection, rather than a cause for getting an ulcer, I felt my anger quickly drain away. Waiting in line at Costco became not a trial to be endured, but a moment of grace. In that moment, I remembered what Advent is all about. I put myself back into the shoes of the Jews who were waiting for the Messiah. And I remembered that I too am waiting for Christ to return. And get this, I even found myself for the chance to slow down a bit and wait. This was indeed a miracle. By the time I got to check out, my heart was peaceful. 
hidden journals. I felt as if I had discovered hidden treasure. Waiting in line as a moment of grace. Is that something we can see ourselves doing while we're waiting for Christmas? Finally, an important part of waiting for God is to let God know that we long for his presence in our midst, that we need and expect his kingdom to come. In the passage we heard from Isaiah, the prophet cried out to God, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. He knows that God works for those who wait for him, yet he doesn't hesitate to plead with God to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. This season, throughout the time of Advent, we will be singing verses from the song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. This is a true Advent song that reminds us to pray for God to come into our lives and our world in ever more powerful ways. If you are looking for words to guide your prayers this season, this familiar song is a good one. And it's in our hymnals, it tends to be readily available. I'm sure you can find it if you're looking. I'd like to make a little digression on the subject of waiting for a moment to mention a favorite cookbook of mine. Uh, Daniel's Mile, as I mentioned, is a cookbook an awful lot, especially around Christmas time. It's a Christmas cookbook by Jeff Smith, uh, a chef that some of you may recognize if you enjoy watching cooking shows, particularly if you enjoy watching cooking shows in the late 80s and early 90s. Uh, as I often, my, my mother really likes watching cooking shows, and I often enjoy her in front of the TV, so I saw a lot of Justin. He is the Fugu Gourmet for those of you He's also a Methodist minister, and I didn't realize that until I looked at this Christmas cookbook where he not only plenty of recipes for Christmas cookies, etc. But he talks about stories of the origins of some of our Christmas traditions. And one of the traditions he talks about um, is the nativity scene. The first nativity scene was created by St. Francis of Assisi. St. Francis was one who loved the animals and the birds, um, as well as loving um, each person and seeking to treat each person um, as Christ. He also cared about the animals and felt that animals helped him to understand God better. He developed this nativity scene by actually bringing in real animals, real people, a real baby, um, to remind the townspeople of what that first Christmas must have been like. St. Francis also valued highly simplicity, and he pursued that. Simplicity and service were two of his main pursuits. Um, and there was a friend of his, a woman named Claire, uh, also um, led an order of women who were also seeking um, simplicity and service. And so in this cookbook, uh, this Christmas cookbook, uh, Jeff Smith quotes a letter written in the spirit of St. Francis. Written as if from St. Francis, um, who was just then Mother Francis, to Sister Claire. I think this letter is a wonderful letter for all of us to receive. It's dated winter 1224. My dear sister Claire, how kind of you to ask how you can help the brothers in Assisi prepare for Christmas while I am away preaching in the country. I know there is much to be done. Food must be prepared for the many brothers and sisters who will return from their work to celebrate the feast with us. And food must be prepared to share with the poor. 
The townspeople will expect us to arrange another winter scene in Midnight Mass. We must locate animals and torches, even a baby. We must find a priest for the Mass and deacons to assist. You know that in my heart, Christmas, the feast of love, is my favorite feast. The one I wish would never end. It is the time when the poor should be treated royally, and the animals are not only welcome, but necessary to our worship. But, dear sister Claire, do not let yourself or any one of us get caught up in the busyness. That is false preparation for the great Christmas feast. God would have us prepare quietly, in our hearts and in our living. We must pray and wait for the Incarnation but be prepared for it at every moment. Look at the faces of the lonely and befriend them. See Jesus in the hungry and feed them. Put seeds on the road for the birds. And stop to thank God for the beauty of the moon on a cold, dark night. This is how to prepare for Toxic woman, your little brother, Francis. So let's rejoice in this opportunity we have to practice waiting during that night. We all need as much practice as we can get in waiting. Because the truth is, we aren't just waiting to celebrate Christmas once again this year. Even though God came to us as a human being 2,000 years ago, we are still waiting for his kingdom to be made manifest. So the waiting we do during Advent is good practice for the rest of our lives. 